Hey folks, it's Lindsey Hustle with SPS back in the building over at Renaissance High School for the Detroit Public Schools Community District City Championship in track. And I got my guy, Coach Stefan Waits here. How you doing, Coach? How you doing, sir? You all right? Hey, I'm good, man. Um, you know, you're normally a basketball guy, but we got you on the track and field helping these young ladies. What's that been like coaching them? Uh, for me, it's been helpful. It's helped me learn how to be a better coach, how to deal with when a kid body breaks down. Because in basketball, you just hardcore, uh -huh. you do what you have to do, and if they hurt you, ignore it. But when uh, track, you can't ignore it. Yeah, you got to you know? keep it moving. Yeah, I got to keep going. I was talking to you earlier about mental health. The Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network is partnered with Sports Psychology Solutions to promote mental health. How important is it uh, as it relates to discussing mental health with this generation of athletes? Um, right now, very important because of the pandemic. Um, I've had to learn stuff because as an adult, life changed during the pandemic, job-wise, uh, coaching-wise, and everything. And I think sometimes as adults, we don't look at what the kids have gone through. We just look at what we've gone through. Wow. Some parents have lost jobs, houses, um, and it's, it's a stressful. And then we kind of overlook, as a group, we overlook the kids. But I found out um, a lot of kids have a lot of little things going on that may not be big, but they are they, they struggle with it. You know, and it shows up in anger management issues, um, not feeling self-worth. And all those type of things. Now, you mentioned so much is happening. You know, how do you, I've always noticed your demeanor when you're out. You always have a real low-key demeanor dealing with these athletes out here. How do you maintain your level of being low-key? Or is that just what you do when you're in public, but when you get behind <laughs> closed doors, you let them happen? Um, I learned that by actually coaching girls because I coached boys for so long. And then when I coached girls, I came with that boys mentality where it's like an army. You go out there and you do what you yeah. got to do. If you don't, you fall to the side. And I learned that was not the best way with the young ladies. So now I try to be like that big uncle or older cousin and try to show them that I care about your success, not just on the track or basketball or cross country, you know, just show that I care about their well-being. Because uh, I, I try to brag about, usually a kid that play, participates in sports for me, we end up being family and friends down the line, you know. So the mental part of it, I had to learn how to not come up with a soft shoe, but come up with a direct, but yet have my arm around the shoulder and, and guide them in the right spot without raising my voice or shouting and stuff like that. You know? That's great advice. I mean, Coach, you talked about, you know, the difference and the change. Was it like a big ego challenge for you to change your coaching philosophy a little bit from being a little hardcore as it relates to dealing with boys to being a little bit more uh, sympathetic and empathetic as it relates to uh, coaching the girls? Oh, yeah. It was, it was, I won't say hard. It was just I had to go out of what I had always been doing because um, I was an assistant coach for years at Benetton High School and I was the discipline guy. Oh. I was, uh, you know, so I was used to like, hey, you don't do a drill Probably right. People you run hard, you to run long. To, With the girls, I found out I drove them away when I first got the CMA Dallas job. So, you know, it, it just felt like that I was running away, so then I had to change. I had to still be tough, but I had to do a smile, invite them to understand how to tell them how it helps them out in the long run. With boys, you really don't have to do that. Uh, well, I didn't have to do it. You know, then. But with the girls, I had to like, hey, this is why you're doing extra push -ups. This is why you run an extra lap. You know? yeah, and show that as a fun thing. Then yeah. sometimes I had to, an old man had to get out there and run with him some dog. <laughs> and I'm no longer the shape I was when I was younger. James but I had to do that, you know. And it, it helped me as a coach, though. Because it made me uh, get back to focusing on details, the Reports mental details of young ladies and the athletes, really, you know. No, that's a good thing. You're doing an amazing thing. Any advice you want to have for any coach that may be thinking about leaving the coaching game or coming into the coaching game? Um, coming into it, I think, because uh, I know it's a lot of young coaches, they, they want to win, win, win. But sometimes the winning is not winning a city championship or a district, state district or state championship. A lot of it is that how are these young ladies and young men, how are they growing? Are they graduating from college or, are, or my fault, are they graduating from high school first? Right, right. Are they going to college or going to trade school and graduate from them programs? Because right now, um, for me, being an outsider as far as I'm not a teacher, I'm just a coach, I find that a lot of kids, they, just, they don't really see past their 12th grade year, their senior mm. prom, their graduation. And it's a lot of things out there. Um, going to college and doing your best. A lot of kids don't look at it like that. They don't, um, what I've noticed, the kids don't even look past their senior year. Wow. They don't think about three or four years down the line. When I was bring, uh, being brought up and raised by my parents, college was always the, a main option until you actually fail at it. It was a main option. So you try to instill that in these young ladies and young men, sometimes they don't get it. They fight you on it, you know, not physically, but they fight you mentally sure. on it. And I, and I find that it, for me, it exploded more with the pandemic. I've had, I've had a lot of kids I've talked to that I don't want to go to college. I don't want to go to trade school. I just want to make money. I mean, mm. but you have to you have to do something. And you have to be uh, diligent in doing what you're doing to become the best that you want to be, you know. 
Well, coach, let me tell you something. Uh, they're very fortunate to have you from the time you've coached as an assistant coach and what you're doing right now. Any uh, final shout outs you want to give before we let you go? Um, just enjoy, enjoy sports and academics, academic sports. Uh, I always tell kids that um, I appreciate what you're doing because a lot of people don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah you, you, you know, I met you what three or four years ago, uh -huh. and you're a good guy. Um, I appreciate you, it. You're about the kids, you know. Um, like I said, uh, parents. Let's, let's focus on our kids and get them out of this pandemic because it's still going on, the effects yeah. of it. So. Yeah, and you're right here on the ground and you yeah. see that. Well, thanks for oh. all that you do and you continue to do. And I know I'm going to see you some more out here helping these young people. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.